let's just sew whatever. All right, today is going to be a super fun video on all the modifications that I have done to the Guardian, talking about them individually as clips and going over how you could modify this pattern. I had the idea of doing a quilted front panel and um, <laughs> I love this bag uh, so much. So another thing I have changed is we have done an overlay on the webbing for the handles and then a little overlay on the end of the handle just to add a finished effect and it creates some friction on the strap so that it doesn't slide on its own. I've also changed how I do the handle instead of that big box stitch. I just do a really simple square or I guess a u-shaped stitch. No, it's a square. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about all of those changes today. On the inside, I have done a cargo slip pocket. Um, so I really like that. My friend Rosie has also done a video with some modifications, so definitely check those out. This is an awesome backpack, really fun to make. I This is my 11th one in the last two weeks. Send help. So let's go ahead and talk about how to change it, how, how to change any pattern, really, um, and what you would need to do. So I went ahead and I started with a sketch of what I wanted it to look like. And I didn't have that sketch with me, so I'm excited to kind of try again. <sighs> um, so what I did was I cut my main panel of the Guardian out of scrap fabric. And then I cut that in half because I knew I wanted it to be a mirrored image. I then measured with a five inch ruler an angle kind of starting at the the top or in the words yes i started at the bottom so i wanted the corner to be even with my five inch ruler at an angle of course so i then cut that i measured another five inch strip cut and then that was my remainder to make this three sectioned front panel. But what I really wanna do is four sections. So my angle is gonna be a little bit different and my pieces aren't going to be as large, obviously. So what we're gonna do for that is cut the other side differently. I'm gonna go back to talking about this. I'm sorry if it's a little all over the place. It's just how my brain works and show you how I created pattern pieces. Because if you were to take these and lay them onto fabric, cut them out, your piece is going to be too small. Because, sorry, I looked at the camera, I was like, am I recording this? <sighs> your piece is going to be too small because of seam allowances. So if I sew these together, even if it's with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, your piece is going to be smaller than it needs to be because you've taken away, you haven't given back. So what I did, was I grabbed some cardstock and I grabbed my pieces. I started with my bottom. So I knew I needed to add half an inch to this top seam where something is going to be joined to it and to the side seam here where we're going to be adding the next panel centered over. So then what I did was I laid my piece down on cardstock starting in the, the corner that needs nothing attached. The seam allowances are already built into the pattern pieces on those corners, so I don't need to make any adjustments. Oh, there's my problem. <laughs> so I added half an inch to this top here, but I did not add half an inch over here on this seam, which is why it was shorter. Okay, great. So I need to do that. Honestly, I'm gonna do it now because I really liked this and it worked out until there. And I was like, what did I do wrong? So we learned something together. How about that? So 
all I'm gonna do for that is just tape a little piece to it. Cutting it at half an inch from that edge. I really do apologize for the jumping around of this video and if you can hear my husband doing the dishes. Um, I think we can all agree if your husband does the dishes, you're not going to argue. All right, so once again, we have this part of the pattern and you wanna add half an inch to the top, half an inch to the side. Wherever you're going to be adding fabric, you need to add your seam allowance. If you don't wanna add a half an inch seam allowance, you could add 3 eighths. Whatever your preferred seam allowance is, just make sure it's consistent. And then, for the center piece, this one was really complicated and it looks super weird, but again, I laid it down on the edge where I knew we aren't adding anything. Honestly, this is really good because now I can like double check myself. And I think I, yeah, because we're not adding anything to this top edge here. So I lined up that corner and the side and I measured half an inch where we would join the top piece, half an inch where we would join the mirrored piece and half an inch where we would join the bottom piece. So you do need to add half an inch to both pieces. I know you're technically adding an inch, but when you lay them right sides together, you're sewing half an inch on both pieces. So then we cut that out and it looks super awkward. And then for this top piece, again, I made little marks on my muslin pattern piece of where I needed to add additional seam allowance. Oh, okay, okay, that's why. So it's half an inch on this side and this side. So then I have all of those marked as cut to mirrored with my bottom, middle, top, and then I labeled it with contrast, contrast, and main fabric, which you can obviously switch up however you wanted to do. So I apologize if that was long-winded and kind of confusing, but I'm gonna show you again how I would do it to create this like four triangular pattern pieces. I literally can't stop staring at this, like just, <laughs> It's so beautiful. Anyway, I can't keep it, but I want to. I could keep it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> okay, so here is my other half of the Guardian cut from scrap fabric. Um, so however you would wanna create this, I would say first just sketch it out. Um, maybe you want it to be the entire panel is like striped or something, or you just wanna have like long chevron pieces going diagonally. I don't know, whatever you're thinking, it could work. Um, but what I wanna do is create four pieces. You could also just say, you know, I want to add two and a half inch strips, and then you would just cut it every two and a half inches, etc. I think what I'm gonna do is four inches. Makes me wish I had a four inch ruler. And something you could do is even kind of trace this out with like your silver marking pen or something just to kind of see what it'll look like. And I think four inches is going to be what I want. Oop, yep, four inches is the winner. Absolutely. Yep, so it's gonna create 
a really pretty repeat. <clears throat> so now I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter and cut that out. You could also do this digitally. If you have this pattern, you could open it up in Photoshop or Illustrator if you have the knowledge and add to those pattern pieces. Not everybody has that ability, so I didn't want to show it that way. All right. So now I'm gonna go over same as before, but repeating it again might help. So I have top, and now this part up here, the very tippity top, I don't need to add anything to. However, where I'm joining, I need to add half an inch. So I'm adding a little arrow, and then for the center, I'm adding that half an inch, so I drew a little arrow. So that I know when I trace this piece out, I need to add half an inch there and down there. Okay, this is middle, top, middle, bottom, and this is bottom. Now here I'm going to need to add to three spots to the side, to the center, and to the bottom. I don't need to add anything up here. This is the top edge of the guardian and I don't need to add anything over here because the seam allowance we need is already built into the pattern. For this one, we need to add at that section to the side and again to that bottom edge. And then for the bottom, we only need to add to the top because this is the side with built-in seam allowance. This is the bottom, built-in seam allowance. If for some reason you wanna cut these pieces to be like maybe an eighth of an inch bigger or a quarter of an inch bigger, you could absolutely do that. And that would just give you some wiggle room to like square the pattern pieces, but I don't wanna mess with that. This is what I want. So now I have cardstock. Okay, making sure my microphone's working. Really, really thick cardstock that I'm going to create my pattern pieces with. So I'll go ahead and start with my bottom piece. And I'm just going to make sure that everything is out of the way so I don't accidentally cut through something. I'm going to grab this ruler. And I am just going to clip this into place. And I'm going to grab a rotary cutter and my ruler that already has half an inch marked out. I'm just going to cut it. This paper is really thick. My word, I pushed pretty hard. Let's try that again. Okay. There is that. And then I am tracing this edge. Now, once you sew these together, which I will show you doing on camera, you're going to run into the issue of the little dog ears, I think they call it in quilting. They're going to confuse you, but you're just going to trim them off anyway. Okay, so I'm going to label this one bottom. Cut mirror. I'm going to leave these together. All right, so now we can move on to the next piece, which is the middle bottom. So for this, I can line up this edge with my paper, making sure to leave half an inch or more everywhere you need it. You could even take this down if you needed to. I'm just using clips. I'm going to add half an inch here. Okay. 
And I am in no way an expert at quilting pieces, etc. So if you know of a better way, please feel free to let us know down below in the comments. I'm just sharing the way that I did it because I know people have asked. So this area here you can see is cre has created like a strange shape, but I feel like if you were to cut it at an angle or something, it could still work out. I'm not gonna worry about that, but keeping that in place, put that back there. There we go. So now this is my middle, my mid bottom cut mirrored. I think I can get my top, yeah, out of this. I think I am going to tape this one down. mirrored. You could even add an arrow for which way is up, just in case. Like on this side, I think I'm going to add a little arrow, a little arrow, just because when you start to mirror it, it's like, wait, what is happening? So yep, arrows up. I don't need to add any seam allowance to those two sections, but I do need to add it here. So I'm going to start with cutting where I do need to add it, and then I will straighten it. I feel like maybe I should have added because like it just doesn't look like it will fit once it's on there, you know? But it will. Alright. This is seriously like, it's confusing, but it's fun. I love bag math. Don't, don't catch me with regular math. I mean, I'll do it. I enjoy math, but God. Okay. So just to double check, we've got an arrow here. I've added my seam allowance, arrow here, seam allowance added, arrow here, arrow here. Didn't even sound like real words at that point. Okay, so this is our middle top. Arrow. Cut. Mirrored. You see what I mean? Once you flip it over, it's like, what? Which way does that go? Okay. So that is us creating the pattern pieces based off the original, which is really cool. 
So now we just need to figure out where our fabric is gonna go. Um, Needle and Anchor has a really fun way of doing that with a coloring page. It's super fun. And now I feel like if you need a little visual, this might help you. So you can see the seam allowances we added. Hmm. I'm almost tempted to like cut off the overlap. Like right there, that doesn't need to be extended so far down because we aren't gonna sew it on so far down. It might be what we end up clipping off anyway, but I don't know. Know what I mean? Oh well. Anyway, so now we can decide what do we what do we want this to look like? Do we want the top to be printed, middle top to be accent, printed accent? I don't know. What we can do to figure that out is if we have um, scraps of something. We could lay it over, you know, what do we want to exist in place of what we already have? Um, I had already cut out some pieces and I have some cork I'm using. So I think it might just depend on what, what I'm looking at for cork scraps. If you would rather have both sides you could absolutely trace this one mirrored and then you'd be able to say left and right of your bag. That's totally up to you. Um, I feel like this might be accent. This will be print. This will be print. This will be accent. Because I think I have enough, but then that means I have a print in the bottom corner where it might have more wear and tear. Cause I'm making um, like a twin to this bag here. Hmm. I think I'm gonna flip it. So that these are print and these are cork. Cause I, I think I can get that out of there. I think I can get this out of here. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do just to be sure is trace this piece first. And just kind of see visually where we can get it. Luckily, cork isn't directional, so I don't have to worry about that. I've also used a really thick cardstock so I can easily trace around it. Not have to worry about it jumping around. So I traced this one with the wrong side facing up. Now I need to flip it so that the right side is facing up. And then I know they're mirror images of each other. So we can write this one is wrong, just so we know which side is which. But then keep in mind, on your other fabric, you'll need to mark it the same way on the back. So this is right. We're good there. Let's see, can we get this out of here? Oh, we can. Oh, you betcha, you betcha. Okay. Bottom right. So now I need to flip it. We've got a little spot here. Oh yeah. Okay. And this is wrong. And that is unreadable. So we'll go ahead and cut these out. This is my scrap, my cork scrap. Okay. 
Okay, now if you need to, what you can do is lay that out just to double check and then if you want, oh, I didn't mark my little arrow. I need that arrow. So what we can do here is trace our seam allowance on. Are you dying on me? Oh, definitely. That That's a dead pen. Of course I have no refills. <laughs> They're all at HQ. All right, that's okay. We'll use this bright red one. Add another arrow there and put a B. B. Okay, so those are definitely mirrored of each other. I'm telling you, this is not easy, but it's satisfying. Okay, we're only cutting one of these, but I'm keeping my muslin with the pieces <clears throat> so that I know what it looks like later because who knows when I'll come back to being obsessed with the Guardian, you know? Who knows? All right, mine's good. <clears throat> so now we have this piece. So I'm gonna grab that and put our arrow there. Okay. That's wrong side there. We're going to flip this, put the arrow there, okay. I think the Guardian would also be really cool to feature um, like a quilt block, I think that would be so cute. And then you can do a butterfly stitch on these seams, but what I did was I only stitched on my contrast fabric or the cork or the vinyl, um, turning the seams one direction all together. All right, so, oh, it's gonna be so pretty. That goes like that. So knowing that, what I can do is mark out my seam allowance. Goes there, there, and there. And the ruler that I'm using is my 12 by two and a half inch ruler. I know some people say they don't like rulers with half inch markings on it because they're get lost but like it's so obviously a half that it's easy for my brain at least to go that's right that's that okay so that was my middle top piece and all that we needed out of the cork oh my goodness I'm so excited for this yeah that doesn't need anything so now we can grab this piece I already cut. I don't think I'm gonna be able to, well, I might be able to get both pieces. This 
Mm. No, we'll fudge it. Again, I'm gonna flip this over and trace. It doesn't hurt to trace. If your print is directional, you're definitely gonna wanna have to worry about that. But this one, it really isn't directional. <laughs> Sounds like CJ just kicked something that was on the floor. Okay. I'm gonna gently add a little arrow there. This was this one. So this is right side up. And this is where my seam allowance is. And this is where my seam allowance is. Let me cut that out now. So then based on my seam allowance markings, I know that this one goes here, which really doesn't look right. Is that right? I'm telling you, it's a freaking puzzle. Yeah. That's right. So something I would suggest that you could do is, I think I'm going to try to do it this time, is to even mark on my pattern pieces what I'm cutting off for that dog-eared section. You can see all of that we're just going to cut off um, so that we don't even worry about it. But. For my simple brain, that's almost more than I can <laughs> manage at this moment. Okay. So that one we cut this way. So now I want to flip this over to trace. I think we can do it out of this corner. I'm also so sorry if I'm explaining this terribly. It's just it's just what we're what we're working with. I guess technically you could add that seam allowance to all of your pieces and then you would know for sure that you've added it, accounted for it, but oh well. <clears throat> okay, so this one is cut this way, so now I need to flip it to trace this one. Well, cool.
the main fabric I'm using is actually a test fabric that I am trying out. It's a it's another water resistant type fabric, but it has a cotton feel to it all throughout. There's none of the PVC feeling backing. It may actually be PVC, but I it doesn't feel like it. Okay. So this one <laughs> this one goes this way so my only seam allowance not added is here so I'm going to flip this over add my half inch everywhere else This one goes here. So I can go ahead and line that up. I can add this one to the bottom as well. Oof, yes. So then this piece is this way which means this is the top, which means everything but the side has our seam allowance added. And I'm using this red pen just very gently on those seam allowance markings. I don't know if maybe if this accidentally gets super soaked, if the red will start to soak through, so I really don't want that since I'm using just a regular ink pen. So just circle in the middle of the dosh darn fabric. All right, editing Lauren, you better be on your game for that one. I'm just lining that last piece of cork up. And then that's it for the quilted piece chevron front panel. And we're gonna go sew these together. I'm pretty much just gonna start going to town so long as I know it's safe, making sure all those pieces are out of the way. allowance is marked. Really doesn't matter since you marked on both pieces which one you start on.
I'm so anxious hoping this turns out okay. Okay, there's those four together. you could even like fold it at half an inch because that to me doesn't look like it's going to line up once we sew it together. So I'm just going to shift it a little bit. Yeah. It's better. stitch that down into place and I am top stitching on the cork fabric Maybe it's right. <laughs> this is what happened to me last time, too. I'm not an expert, but I tried. Maybe I just got something mixed up on the mirror and panel or something. Or maybe it'll all work out in the end and I'm just being silly. Did it here too? <sighs> Crap. Maybe it just looks like it though because of all the extra little dog ears. But now I can see <laughs> that these go together. Yeah, like what is happening? I even marked out my seam allowances. But I'm just gonna go with it, you know? Because why not? Maybe it'll work out. I think I must have shifted a piece or something. All of my connections line up though. Like all of these cork pieces are lining up so we should be okay um if you have a domestic machine those areas are going to be pretty thick so that's why the butterflying your seam may be better but i am not worried about that 
I'm also hoping I made up for any consistent inconsistencies by keeping a consistently straight stitch there. So we can open this up. It's freaking gorgeous. But it's too small right here. <laughs> what did I do? We can still make it work. I did on the last one too. Maybe I didn't add a seam allowance somewhere. Anyway, for this, I am gonna butterfly this open and top stitch along both seams. I am going to leave all these mistakes in there because I think it'll, you know, show that this isn't easy, especially if you're a pattern designer or wanting to be a pattern designer. Trial and error. Um, if you are a pattern designer and you would love to tell me what I did wrong, please comment down below. If you've gotten this far, if you haven't just scoffed the whole time. So I'm going to go take this to the cutting table and square it up with the pattern piece and see what we're working with, or in this case, what we're dealing with. All right, I have laid it on my foam and it seems like we did okay. Not great, but okay. Here is my front main panel piece. Um, I think I'm going to mark the center with a Sharpie, which would be six inches. Just gonna make a tiny little tick mark at the top and bottom. Uh, okay, what is the top? Technically 10 and a half, so 5.25. And that's just so I can kind of hopefully get those center seams lined up properly. Yeah, I think I'm just not destined to <laughs> make the guardian in this manner because this one is almost worse than my first attempt. <laughs> but I'm going to just square it up so weird though because like it's good in spots and then in others it's like no honey did he, were you even trying so I don't know where it is I went wrong Is like the biggest issue and I almost think it's because of how much further it overlaps or it's because I need to add like that half an inch to the tip maybe I need to trim. That would seem right. That would make sense to me. That we need to trim that 
to prevent it from going further than my main fabric so that I line it up a little bit better. Yeah, I could see that. Because it's better on this side than it is on this side. It's like a quarter of an inch too small over here, so I'm gonna have some fun. Um, I'm going to trim down my foam to be half an inch shorter because I've noticed with the foam, it adds a lot of bulk to the bottom front panel. So I just wanna help myself and reduce that. Um, but that is me going over how to piece, how to poorly piece the front panel of the Guardian. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I will be showing you how to add some more hacks coming up. Now I'm going to show you how I do the fun and fancy backpack straps for the Guardian crossbody. You can literally do this to any bag. I'm not going to lie, I copied it off of Michael Kors. Every time I saw the um, Guardian style backpack being carried around, I saw it had, some of them at least, had this kind of like strap overlay and I was like okay well that's super cool and I have found that it adds a little more bite to the slide adjuster and it's less likely to wiggle around so I have cut these to 12 inches long one and a half inch wide you could do them a little bit smaller than your webbing if you wanted to and then I measured one inch up from the edge and three quarters or whatever your center is and then I just angled my scissors and cut, and then I'm gonna lay this just directly over top and sew it into place. If you wanted to, you could cut two of these, one on each side, and then you could edge coat it. You could edge coat these pieces if you wanted. I don't want to, I'm not going to. Um, but I think it feels really nice. It looks really cute. And I don't know, it's just a fun little thing we can add. And then I also have these little strips of fabric here. This is three inches wide by the width of my webbing, which is one and a half inch. And this is gonna go on the end of my webbing. It's gonna prevent fraying. And again, it's gonna add a little more bite to the strap, to that slide adjuster. So I'm not actually going to be sewing these on now. You totally could if you prefer to rivet through your strap around the slide adjuster, um, but I've enjoyed sewing it, especially with this little strip of fabric here. So I'm just gonna clip it on. But yeah, let's go ahead and sew on this overlay. It's so cute. I'm using a stitch length of 4.5 and just following along the edge of the fabric, getting as close to that edge as possible and definitely as close to the point as possible. is what that looks like. Super easy. It's also really helped me kind of designate which side of the Guardian is which for the straps anyway when I'm putting it together because you want to cut them at an angle and then when you lay them on the backpack, you want to make sure the angles are going in the correct direction. So I have found that to be super helpful. So now I'm going to cut that angle. I have this little 
gadget from my friend Kayla at Carolina Little Stitches that helps you cut the angle of your backpack straps perfectly every time. So I'm just gonna lay this up on the edge and then I will cut it on that mark. And that is how you add the little overlay to your backpack straps, super quick. Another little trick that I have for the Guardian is when you are sewing the zipper, especially with the, the top half of it, it can be really hard to get around that curve and keep everything in line. If you are using a fabric that has like absolutely no stretch, this should work pretty well. But what I'm doing is I have it taped in the center and I've only clipped it on the sides and I am creating a straight section for me to sew. So right now I'm at like the top of the curve and I am applying absolutely very minimal pressure and making sure I'm not stretching anything and I'm sewing. So you can see it's not connected there, but I know that it's the right size, zipper, etc. So I can then Again, very little pressure using my Ouija board hands. <laughs> like right there, you don't want to stretch. You just want to gently push the layers into place. You can see I'm starting to get around that curve and I just want to re-manipulate those layers. I tried to show this in my tutorial, but the vinyl I was using had like the slightest stretch to it. Like, okay, so I'm getting to the straight side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave my needle in place and just kind of situate these pieces together make sure my zipper pulls out of the way. And now it is just a straight, straight shot. Make sure you keep those layers lined up. Okay. So now my zipper is basted into place along that curve and I can apply the lining side. So I want to face it so that the lining is up and that when I lay this in place, my lining is touching my lining. So I've just got little piece of double-sided tape to hold it at the center. I don't want anything to shift there. And then I'm folding this along and clipping the lining into place at the bottom. And that's the only place I'm going to clip. I am pretty confident that these layers will work because I've cut them off a template. So if you're not confident, I, I would recommend maybe don't do this. Um, but then I'm gonna sew in from my basting stitch, or I, I should say my stay stitch for the zipper. Move your flap out of the way. And waterproof canvas definitely doesn't have any stretch, so I should be okay. I'm pressing along the zipper teeth with my fingers and my needle in and lining up and I'm literally just taking like a little three inch chunk at a time going nice and slow I can feel the zipper tape with my fingers so I know I don't have any bunching or puckering and I didn't clip my zipper tape um, I find that clipping it could make it fray over time, so I just don't do it. I don't know if it really does happen or not, but I just don't do it. So I'm pressing. I can feel my teeth. I'm continuing on. I'm getting close to the other side of the curve, so I want to rearrange my layers. 
you like I said you just you don't want to pull or yank on these layers you just want them to sit nicely Almost through that curve. And now it's just a straight shot. And then you're just gonna top stitch. This is the biggest change that has really helped me make more of this bag without hurting myself. <laughs> because it it it's a lot of layers um, and it's a very small section that has been given to you to complete the task, which isn't bad like it's totally doable um it's fine but if you are batch sewing these as i have this is number 12 and i put the pattern pieces away i'm done I'm sewing these together and then i'm going to sew it move my exterior out of the way i'm gonna lay this down you could butterfly this seam open and top stitch along either side if you wanted. I don't have a double-sided tape that will hold down waterproof canvas. So I just sew it at the top. Okay. And now that's not going to shift on me and create bulk in weird spots. And now we're going to add our exterior front to the exterior back put that together And then keep your lining out of the way. I've got it folded way down and I'm gonna top stitch through the exterior front panel. And if you're using foam like I am, you could actually, I should have done that with this one, trim it half an inch so it's not within the seam twice. Because right now I've got two layers of foam on top of everything else that I'm sewing through. So it's pretty bulky. But that helps that sit nice and flush. Now, if you're making the pattern as instructed, you're going to line these up and then add your handle overlay. No, not here. Not me. Lining completely out of the way. Again, there's literally nothing wrong with the instructions as they are, it was just a lot for me. So I'm like, we gotta change this. So I've already marked on the handle three inches in and added two little dots. Hopefully you can see that. You want your straps to the back and we're gonna center the handle. Lining it up with the side and it'll puff up a little bit and repeat that on the other side. Center. So there should be three quarters on either side. Yep, 
We're good. And then just make sure that your handle sits evenly. Because if this isn't even, you're gonna know. I don't think it was quite even on this side. Here we go, better, I think. lining completely out of the way. I'm only sewing through my exterior and I'm going to start at the edge, keeping my handle nice and flat. We're sewing over that strap, leaving the needle in at that three inch mark and coming down. Needle in and coming back down. And then I'm going to sew along there so that the webbing doesn't shift and somehow poke through later on. That would be bad. We don't want that. And repeat that on this side. Again, lining is just out of the way. bulk here for me so I'm just gonna sew really slow making sure nothing jumps around use my needle in okay um, we're gonna be able to easily add the side panels with how much room we have and then once you've added your side panels if you wanted to you could baste them together before you flip the bag so you'd have the seam here and the seam here and you would just kind of baste it at the edge so that the lining isn't saggy but using the waterproof canvas it has a lot of structure and it's not going to be saggy um, and that concludes my hacks for the guardian backpack just to really show you what I mean with that is here I have the panels attached. You can see so much nicer than dealing with just that little bitty space together, but you can fold. This is the top, this is the top. Fold these together, line them up, find your centers, and just do a quick baste stitch through those layers within the seam allowance. And then when you flip it, right side out those will be tucked tacked together um but i really find that the waterproof canvas has enough structure that it, it still sits nicely in the bag if you're using a cotton woven thinner materials definitely tack it but otherwise should be good